It happens every fall Saturday afternoon. Thousands cheer the excitement and pageantry. Coaches ponder, and players charge onto fields across America. There have been many great teams over the years, none that comes close to this one. For these are the finest 23 players in college football. The 1980 Coaches All-America Team. The official 1980 All-America Football Team. I'm Jerry Claiborne, head football coach at the University of Maryland. As president of the American Football Coaches Association, I have the honor of introducing the 1980 Coaches All-America football team. Each of these young men have successfully combined academics and athletics. And you'll see, once they put on the pads, they sure know how to play football. 1980 proved to be the year when coaches across the country exploited the forward pass to the maximum. More balls fill the airways than geese flying south. Of the flock of quarterbacks, two stood out. Jim McMahon of Brigham Young University is only a junior, and opposing coaches flinch when you say it. Last year it was Wilson, before that Nielsen, but in Provo, they feel McMahon is the best of them all. To say he had a great year would be an understatement. Number nine is the first seasonal 4,000 yard passer in NCAA history. In leading BYU to its third straight WAC title, four new records fell to the arm of the Cougar signal caller, including a record that stood since 1969 of most TD passes, 47 in a single season. With another year of eligibility left, few records are out of Jim McMahon's reach. Part two of the coach's quarterback tandem is Mark Herman of Purdue University, a starter for coach Jim Young since his arrival in Lafayette. Mark uh, has done more for our program than you could ever expect an individual to do. He's the most accurate uh, passer, I've got to believe, that's been around in certainly a long uh, time. He's had a great deal of pressure on him since his freshman year, and he's handled it uh, extremely well. I've just wanted to, to drive back there and then throw it because uh, I feel that's what I do well and uh, I enjoy doing that. And, uh, you know, when you hear that crowd roar, it gives me a special feeling and uh, it's just really, really gratifying. For just sitting back there and throwing, Herman has established the new NCAA record for total offense, passing for more yardage, 9,188, than any other college quarterback. This youngster from Carmel, Indiana, is a truly gifted passer, enabling all deliveries to be made on the mark. While playing for the Boilermakers, All-American Herman was blessed with one of the finest big targets in the land, All-American receiver selection number 80, Dave Young. Running most of his patterns over the middle, Young has a philosophy about that dangerous assignment. Hey, I figure, you know, a lot of times you see guys go up for the ball and they miss it and they still get hit. So I look at it that you go get hit whether you catch it or not, so it's best to just catch it. At 6'6 and 242 pounds, Dave Young showed tremendous durability in starting 43 consecutive contests and catching a pass in all but two of the games he's played. It's not hard to figure out why all Purdue's receiving records carry Dave Young's signature. Finding Ken Marjoram for a sure Stanford completion is as easy as finding a pretty girl in Malibu. He's got it down to a science. The main thing I try and work on is concentration. Uh, when the ball's in the air, whoever's around me, the only thing on my mind is just to go after the ball and, and get both hands on the football. Uh, when, I was young, when I was younger and I, I lived on the beach uh, in Fountain Valley, which is near Huntington, Newport Beach, Southern California, 
I would play frisbee, and it was kind of the same thing. And you know, and the balls in the air, I'd just go after it the same way I went after frisbee when I was a little kid. Catching these funny-looking frisbees for six points happened often enough for Marjoram to break the Pac-10 record for TD receptions. Dave Young and Ken Marjoram. Little wonder why they're coaches All-American. Get in your stance, in your stance. There you go. Right, 43. Which foot? What step? Coach Jerry Claiborne of Maryland calls it the war in the trenches. Military terms best describe what happens at the line of scrimmage. No pass can be completed, nor run broken, without the hard work of unheralded men in the offensive line. It takes a lot of fundamentals, a lot of driving those sleds, to be an All-American in the offensive line. Senior John Scully of Notre Dame has triggered the Irish offense for the past two seasons and is the coach's pick for All-America Center. Scully was particularly adept at picking up blitzing linebackers, providing Irish passers with precious extra seconds for long touchdown strikes. Lewis Oubre from Oklahoma looks as friendly as an oversized bear cub. But strap number 66 inside a helmet, and he'd sooner put you on your back than let you get a shot at an OU running back. At 280 pounds, Nick Ayer's pet name is The Bear, and number 72 loves it. BYU fans like him, too, for his desire to keep would-be trappers off Jim McMahon as Cougar touchdown dreams come true. Getting the little extra out of yourself is what Bill Dugan of Penn State believes makes you better than the guy across from you. The Nittany Lions know how Dugan feels, so it isn't strange to see them blast over number 77's left side in crucial situations. The Panthers from Pitt have a quality offensive line anchored by Outland Trophy winner Mark May. With stats like 6'6 six, six, and 275 on his side, May destroyed opponents in his own brand of hand-to-hand -hand combat, earning himself a spot on the coach's offensive line. The new college football Hall of Fame near Cincinnati is a special place where legends are remembered and displayed. A walk into the past with the greatest players of all time, dating back to the first All-America team selected by coach Walter Camp in 1889. No one in football has to ask, who's you? The University of Pittsburgh has retired Hugh Green's jersey number 99, only the second such honoring for athletic excellence in the school's history. When I first came here, I, uh, I had a choice of uh, playing linebacker or defense end, and I, I felt that uh, I played defense end because I felt like I, I could rush the pass the better. I can beat the tackles, and uh, that's one of the most important things in them, get to the quarterback and make, him, make the big play happen at that time. I study like both tackles and tight end. How they come off the ball, different positions as far as uh, them hooking me, base block or blocking down. I feel that I can make the big play at least four out of the five times. In truth, it seemed like Green was always there. Whether it was jamming up the middle, fighting off blockers for one of his 131 tackles, or persuading runners to go outside, where he cut them down with devastating results. Hugh Green gained repeat recognition on the coaches' All-America team. Long heralded as an offensive powerhouse, Houston changed its colors in 1980. And on the shoulders of 6'7", 270-pound Leonard Mitchell, the Cougars' swarming defense ran roughshod in the Southwest. The mammoth defensive tackle dominated his would-be blockers and set up shop at opponents' backfield. Mitchell's hot pursuits made it quite evident. He really enjoyed his work.
Senior nose guard Ron Simmons is a repeat from last year's coaches team. Fans in Tallahassee were treated to another vintage year of Florida State football and a trip to the Orange Bowl. Fighting off nagging injuries much of the year, Simmons anchored a stingy Seminole unit that led the nation in scoring defense by allowing only seven points per game. There was plenty to kick up your heels about in Chapel Hill, where the Tar Heels won the ACC title behind the leadership of team captain Lawrence Taylor. Starting from his up lineman's position, the 6'3", 242-pound senior roamed from sideline to sideline making tackles. Opposing coaches swear one man couldn't be in all those spots at once. Number 98, Lawrence Taylor was. E.J. Jr. of Alabama earned a reputation for searching out the football and delivering a lethal lick. A transformed fullback, Jr. was completely at home in the enemy's backfield. Often assigned a role in pass coverage, his natural speed puts him where the ball is. The chosen leader of the Cotton Bowl bound tie defense averaged five solo tackles a game. Bama's contribution to the coach's defensive line, E.J. Jr. The sky was the limit at Baylor University where supporters flipped over two-time coaches All-American linebacker Mike Singletary's lofty goal. One of these days, I hope that I uh, put whatever I have in, into that team to make it a Southwest Conference Championship team. Maybe my freshman year it wasn't, maybe my sophomore year it wasn't, maybe my junior year it wasn't, but now it is. And uh, it just means total satisfaction. In his determined pursuit of linebacking perfection, Singletary led the Bears unscathed through their Southwest Conference schedule and into the land of cotton on New Year's Day. At Notre Dame, head coach Dan Devine has the highest praise for his star linebacker. Well, Bob Crable is a junior, and he's, uh, I think, the third junior in Notre Dame history to be captain. I used to say he was the best junior football player in the United States. Now I'm not sure that he isn't one of the best players in the United States. Uh, I certainly don't know who I would trade for him. Leading the Irish in tackles, Crable's brand of disruption left opponents dazed and wary of their next encounter. The defensive part of football is intimidation that plays a large part in it. If you can hit someone as hard as you can and make, not so much make them hurt, but make them feel it, then they're going to know that you're there the next time they come running through that hole. No question, enemy backs have number 43 on the mind. The cornerstone of South Bend defense, Bob Crable. An overwhelming choice for All-America honors. They make up the last line of defense, deep backs. Its members must be cautious in covering the fleetest of receivers, yet gamblers at heart to come up with a big interception. After close scrutiny, the coaches selected the four best for this year's All-America team. I have never been blessed with being on the field with any more gifted of an athlete than Ken Easley. Coach Terry Donahue's opinion was shared by fans who saw the 6-2 Easley's ferocious play. My responsibilities vary with the, with the type of defense that we're playing. I read quarterback and running back on run plays. 
on passing plays, I read the release of receivers and the drop of the offense alignments. So uh, I'm basically keying two different things or four different things on various occasions. I kind of pride myself on uh, being aggressive in my area. I don't think I'm necessarily mean or anything like that. It's just the way I play the game and, it, and my temperament. Whether it's the temperament or not, Ken Easley is rated the most devastating hitter in college football. Georgia senior Scott Werner led the Bulldogs' opportunistic defense. At six feet and only 188 pounds, you might think Werner light for heavy tackling. Not so. In winning the SEC championship and a Sugar Bowl appearance, many big plays were needed. Number 19 had a knack for making them. Mustang mania was probably invented by SMU's John Simmons. Not only did he patrol a secondary spot with 17 career interceptions, but ran punch back with genuine broken field artistry, going all the way with this dazzling 66-yarder against Texas A&M. USC football is ripe with traditions. Ronnie Lott is one of them. I guess you come here, you know, dreaming of being All-American and, you know, being around some of the great All-Americans like Dennis Thurman and Charlie Phillips, you know, you try to live up to what they've been doing and try to, you know, follow their footsteps. Ronnie Lott, I think, is uh, has the size and the speed, the combination of, of the physical gifts, and he's also one of the most aggressive players we've had. So he kind of has those mixtures of things, both physical and intangible, that you're looking for, and you really seldom get. Coach John Robinson has gotten four superlative years out of the 6-2 Master Thief. Ronnie Lott is a unanimous choice for the Coaches All-America Secondary. The pageantry as much a part of college football as tackles and touchdowns. The running back, football's Mr. Excitement, always on the go, providing open field action that brings fans to their feet. Quick durable runner can take a team a long way. We analyzed some of the finest runners all across the country, and this is the coach's selection as the best runners of 1980. Nebraska Rooters are bull watching once again this year, and senior Jarvis Redwine's flying feet have a lot to do with it. The classy eye back danced his way through opponents' defenses that were key to stop him. Puffing for 1,119 yards at 7.2 per carry, Redwine seemed to be in perpetual motion. Sometimes pounding out his special Husker tune or freelancing in the open field. Marvelous Jarvis, Nebraska's most exciting player since Johnny Rogers wore the big red. A sure choice for this year's coaches All-America backfield. The fanfare heard coming from the south was the announcement heralding the arrival of 6'1", 218-pound freshman, Herschel Walker. Undoubtedly the most publicized star to enter the collegiate ranks in years. 
Walker led the Bulldogs to an undefeated season by gaining 1,616 yards, more than any other freshman running back in NCAA history. Like the U.S. Mail, carries went through rain or shine at an amazing 25 times a game. At the tender age of 18, number 34 was never off, and his slam-bang style simply wore down enemy tacklers. What freshman phenomenon Herschel Walker lacked in experience, he more than made up in natural talent. A bomb waiting to explode is the best way to describe South Carolina's George Rogers. The 6'2", 220-pound tailback has run for 100 yards in 21 straight games. Punishing tacklers just seems like his second nature. My running style's been a whole lot more bold, you know, trying to run, run over my opponent. I even, you know, try to just manhandle him. And, you know, when I should be running out of bounds and stuff like that, just keep him away from him. But I guess that I'm just getting used to playing tailback. So, you know, in time, I think I do much better than I'm doing now. He can't do much better, gaining nearly 5,000 career yards. Only previous All-Americans Dorsett, White, and Griffin have more. Rogers' intense desire to break the goal line plane has driven him to 33 career TDs. George Rogers is South Carolina's answer to the energy shortage and the winner of this year's coveted Heisman Trophy. You've just seen some of the finest football players in America, the 1980 Coaches All-America football team. Let me take this opportunity to thank you fans for making this a great year for college football.